What's up guys? I've recently done a few different 3D printing projects with some people I know, and they're always amazed that things just seem to work for me. And I'm here to tell you guys that the secret is just regular old maintenance and actually doing it. So that's what we're gonna dive into here. So obviously doing thoughtful maintenance frequently will help increase both the lifespan and reliability of your 3D printer. Lifespan is that the stuff in the printer lasts longer, which is less waste and less time and money that you spend fixing and replacing those parts. And reliability is that your 3D printer actually works when you want it to work, which minimizes failed prints, which minimizes waste and time and money as well. Basically, whenever you do maintenance, focus on just doing maintenance so that when you want to create things, you can just focus on creating things. Compartmentalizing those two efforts is really nice. Now, obviously, I just said that frequently doing maintenance is really important, so how frequently are we talking? A lot of people think that this is a monthly thing or a weekly thing or whatever. I typically do it anytime I open a new package of filament, right? If I'm going through a lot of filament, then I'm using the printer a lot, and it's probably worth doing a bit of extra maintenance on. And on the flip side, if one spool of filament lasts me a good while, then there's probably not a ton of use and I can get away with doing it less frequently. On top of that, you know, if you get a new batch of filament and it's something you're familiar with, right, it's a manufacturer you've used in the past, you already have settings for, there's gonna be some slight deviations between batches, so just do yourself a favor, reduce surprises, and test out that batch real quick with your old settings, make sure it's good to go. And especially if you have unfamiliar filament, you're gonna need a whole new set of settings anyway. So in either case, you might as well just knock out the maintenance while you're already in that mindset. So I always like to start with the hardware. With the 3D printer off, we're basically just gonna check out anything that moves or gets hot. So let's start with the X and Y belt tension because that's kind of the hardest point. Really all I look for here is two things. The first one is that I wanna minimize play. So if the belt is loose, when you tighten it a little bit, you'll see it visibly shift up and down by a pretty good amount. But if it's already tight, then it won't shift that much at all. And if you look closely, it's actually just more stretching out than anything. The second thing I look for is max maximizing noise, which sounds weird, but when the belt is loose, most of the noise comes from the print head itself, and especially if your ear is next to the DC motor, it's not going to sound like much, but once the belt is properly tight, you'll actually hear a whole lot more noise coming from the motor. It's the difference between these two sounds. And if you didn't catch that on the first time, I would go replay that once or twice until you can kind of make out the difference between those two sounds. And if you did catch it, then you could like and subscribe for more 3D printing ASMR, I guess. With the hard part out of the way, I usually move on to the Z screw. I lubricate this with a little bit of white lithium grease, just run a line all the way up one side, and then move the gantry up or down once or twice, wipe it clean, make sure it feels smooth, good to go. A lot of people forget about the extruder. There's not a lot to do here, but it is technically a moving part. Really, all you can do here is control how strong it grips the oncoming filament and make sure it just feels smooth. So find the screw that controls the grip strength and unscrew it all the way. You should be able to slide some filament in and out freely. If you can't, you're already good to go. But if you can just slide the filament in or out, obviously it's not going to do you any good. So you just tighten it down bit by bit by bit until it can reliably grab the filament. And then from there, I move on to cleaning the nozzle. Basically heat the 3D printer up to the nozzle temperature that you normally print with. Take the cleaning needle that came with the printer and run it all the way up the nozzle. Pull it out, see if it comes out clean. Sometimes I'll get like a wisp of filament on it. It's all good. Really, you just want to make sure that you don't have debris or other contaminants or particles on it. If you have that, I would take a closer look. If not, still good to go. And then lastly, I just do a bed cleaning. So wipe the whole bed down with isopropyl. I would definitely do this last, especially after the Z screw lubrication, because you'll inevitably have some overspray. And the last thing you want to do is lubricate your print bed, which you expect things to stick to. So with the hardware all calibrated and dialed in, we're gonna move over to the software side of things. So make or open the profile for this specific roll of filament. If you're using a roll of filament that you're relatively familiar with, feel free to base this profile on a previous one or just outright reuse it. But it's important to have a dedicated profile for every spool of filament you have on hand. So the first thing I will start with is a first layer test print. Obviously the first layer is the foundation for everything that gets built after it. It's the only test that every single 3D print will universally use. So it's a great starting point. 
The first thing you're gonna wanna dial in is your bed and nozzle temperatures. I've got a more in-depth video about this in the description if you need it, but get those dialed in. And while you're here, make sure you also dial in the Z-axis offset if you have an auto leveler. Now, once you have the first layer test print perfect, you can move on to doing a bridge and overhangs test print if you need to. If you're new, you probably haven't messed with these before and you could definitely skip them and be fine. But if you've gotten into more advanced bridging and overhang techniques and settings, this is the perfect chance to fire them up real quick and make sure that your settings are still good and tweak them if you need to. And yeah, that brings us to the end of everything. So hopefully it doesn't take you guys too long to run through this process. And if you do find things along the way that you need to fix or replace or settings that you need to tweak and it does drag on, just be glad that you're doing it now and not while you're in the middle of your next project. Other than that, I'd love to hear from you guys. So let me know in the comment section if this was helpful and if you like the more abbreviated format. Hope you guys have a great day. And if it's Friday, have a great weekend. Catch you guys in the next one.